Welcome to episode 25 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger over at sellingyourscreenplay.com. In this episode's main segment, I'm going to be interviewing literary agent Babs Batella. She's an agent at the Silver Batella Agency. She offers some great advice to writers who are looking for representation, so stay tuned for that. I'd like to thank this episode's sponsor, ScreenCraft. ScreenCraft is dedicated to helping screenwriters master the craft of screenwriting and succeed in the business of Hollywood. Sign up for free education and inspiration at ScreenCraft.org. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast. I'd like to thank Alex... Felding, April James, Charnette DeLay, who left me some nice comments over on YouTube. And thank you, Cargo Film, Craig Mack, and Joshua Mills, who retweeted episode 23 with writer-director Jennifer Steinman of Desert Runners. Thanks for those retweets. A couple of quick notes. Any websites or links that I mention in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcasts. Also, if you want my free guide, how to sell a screenplay in five weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell a screenplay in that guide, how to write a professional log line and query letter, how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. It really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. A quick few words about what I'm working on. I've talked about my sci-fi thriller on the podcast a couple of times. I optioned it late last year. The producer has a relationship with two fairly well-known actresses, so we're trying to tweak the script a bit for them to see if we can get them interested in it. It's actually a pretty simple, quick pass at the script, so it will probably only take a few hours. Hopefully it will pay off. These are the sorts of practical issues you face as a screenwriter. Obviously, this is unpaid work, and if these two actresses don't sign on to the project, I'm not sure the work will ha have much value, but it's easy enough, and I think it's worth the chance, so we'll see. A film I wrote called Ninja Apocalypse is screening at this year's Comic-Con in San Diego. The tentative screening time is set for Thursday, July 24th at 8 p.m. at the Marriott Marquis. So if you're planning on going to this year's Comic-Con, keep an eye out for it. I don't think I'll be attending. I have a four-year-old daughter, so it's hard to get away. But I'm thinking that by next year, she might be old enough to appreciate going to something like this. And I know I've always wanted to go. So maybe next year I'll make it out. We will see. So now let's get into the main segment. Today I'm interviewing lit agent Babs Batella from the Silver Batella Agency. She's got some great, very straightforward advice for writers who are looking for an agent. It's, fasc it's a fascinating look at the business from the agent's perspective. Here is the interview. Welcome, Babs, to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Ashley. It's long overdue. I'm happy to be here. So to start out, I wonder if you can give us a quick overview of your career in the entertainment industry, kind of how you got to becoming an agent. Sure. I started out as a rock singer on the road doing cover material on the East Coast, and, uh, and I was assistant photographer for a paparazzi gal in New York, and I had a shoot in San Francisco for her because she was overbooked, and I fell in love with the West Coast. So I packed, moved out here, uh, and I got to Los Angeles. I took a job as a receptionist, but none other than... Henry Rogers' son, Ron Rogers, for Rogers and Associates. That was corporate PR, corporate public relations. I had had a job as a receptionist at Rogers and Cowan. Uh, their publicist, as your audience may know, you probably know them. They're terrific. They actually invented the wheel for publicity. So as, as I started to do that, a publicist said to me, uh, punch up this press release for me. Just take a look at it. And I rewrote it. And she said, you're a writer. You're not a secretary. And that started me uh, looking at my writing bones. Well, it turned out I was a really good ghostwriter, a really good editor, a really fast editor. And it turned out, too, I had a good ear for dialogue. So I penned a couple of novels. I self-published them. And Ed Silver was retiring. Ed Silver was Lee Marvin's uh, a financial guy. He represented Toto. He represented James Colburn. He took care of, I mean, the guy's, you know, been in this business forever. He, he handled the Marx Brothers financials. And the guy's still alive and kicking, and the guy looks 60, and he's fabulous, and he said, listen, I'm semi-retired. Why don't you take over the agency? Your book, Full Moon Morning, is terrific. 
let's see if we can get that shopped as a feature. So a gal flew in from England, wrote the feature, and we're shopping that. And I figured, well, if I could try to hustle one script, let me see if I can hustle some more. Here we are. Uh huh. Huh. Okay. Um, so let's start out with some just some questions. I get asked a lot of questions, and I thought that hearing them from an agent's perspective would be very interesting. The number one question I get, and I'm sure you get it even more than I do, is, you know, how do I get an agent? I'm a new screenwriter. I've written a script or two. How do I go about getting an agent? I wonder if you can just give us your sort of take on that. Well, I can give you my experience, Ashley, based on what I've learned. And remember, I'm only six years into this. Based on what I've learned, and I learn every single day something unique about this business because it's, 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 it's counterintuitive to a regular business business model. What I've learned is the agent actually is the least important facet of the transaction. That is to say, the script has to be terrific. So that means if I'm a writer, I write a bunch of shorts and try and get them shot and get some credits. I write a low-budget horror, thriller, you know, found footage gem that gets the attention of a director who's trying to make it his bones. I don't sign anything. If I get an offer, then I say to an agent at WGA, I, I go down the list, I see a couple of people who I like. I don't go for the biggies, obviously, because I'm a small fry. I'm trying to break in. I'm, I'm breaking my teeth on a short, and I want to protect my rights. Here's why this is important for a short. It's huge. Let's pretend for the sake of this discussion that you as a writer wrote a great short, and you come and you go, Barbara, I really don't think I need an agent for this but because I want to give it to the guy because I want a credit. Good. That's the right attitude. But if we can get 100 bucks out of him, let's do it. Here's why. It shows that the guy, the guy or gal has skin in the game, number one. Number two, it also shows that they might actually shoot it. You know what I mean? If they throw mm -hmm. some money at it, they're kind of committed. But this is more important than anything else. What if you create a Luke Skywalker? What if you create a Hannibal Lecter? In short, what if you create a franchisable character that's so enigmatic, so interesting, so funny, so depressed, so brooding, so lively. What if you create a Mrs. Doubtfire and don't even know it? That's why your rights have, that's where an agent comes in. Because the agent is going to look at the contract and go, okay, I want to make sure you get prequel rights if somebody makes this into a feature. Because you know, Ashley, shorts end up becoming features. Articles end up becoming features. So you want to make sure prequel rights are protected. You want to make sure sequel, you want to make sure as a writer, I, Joe Blow writer, have the first right to refuse the writing assignment if it goes to feature. And that's where the agent comes in. Now that speaks to marketing. Agents can market material, but in truth, we're trying to trap lightning just like you are. It's no different. Yes, I can call the big guys. Yes, I get my calls returned. Yes, most people are nice to me. But a lot of people hang up on me too, even though I'm WGA. Why? I haven't met them. So it, it's really a roll of the dice. You, you, Mr. and Mrs. Writer, you do not need an agent until an offer is coming your way. Do not sign anything. So your audience now has an agent. That's me. Okay, I'll read uh -huh. anything your audience sends me. Script is there. I'm going to make a phone call. If the script not, if, if the script is not there, I'm going to put the script down instead of picking up the phone. Just happened this weekend. Guy heard about what I was looking for. I was looking for something very specific for a buyer. The script happened to be terrific. How odd is that? That's like freaking hitting the lottery. So it really the the writer should not worry about getting an agent because as soon as you call an agent and say, "Hi, I have an offer on the table. Can you write it for me?" You're going to get their attention. Why? Because we have to work for free, just like you do as a writer. Mm -hmm. So let's 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 talk specifically about some of the current writers that you have in your stable and how you actually found them. Um, I mean, I know a couple of your writers, but I wonder if you can just go down your list of you know two or three of your best writers and and tell us exactly how you found that person and how you signed that person onto your agency. One of my first clients is Richard Broadhurst. He's a playwright. And I learned more about dialogue from Richard Broadhurst probably than anyone other than Craig Clyde and Jason Bortz. I happened to know him through Ed Silver, so I met him. That's, that was one of my first clients. And Debbie Scott, who penned Full Moon Morning for me, that was shopping uh, to try and get that uh, period piece done. That's never going to happen. But who knows? You know, lightning will mm -hmm. strike. Uh, but uh, Craig Clyde and uh, Richard has gone on to doing plays, so he doesn't really need me. Craig Clyde, I read one of his scripts got optioned on Inktip, and I love Inktip. I love Tracking Board. I love Spec Scout. I love all those sites because, you know, Jeannie Barrowman, her whole article thing, she, you know, this is where I find stuff when I'm on the hunt. And so I, I read Long Shadow Woman, clearly one of the best scripts that, that's ever been written that I've read. Um, it's, it, it's very reminiscent of a very cool um, 
Sarah Plain and Toll meets a 20, uh, an 18th century blindside. It's terrific. This script is terrific. It, it, whoever stars in it directs it's going to knock it out of the park. But when I got to know him, I flew down to L.A., I met him there, and I got to realize that this guy really could use an agent because he was a little shy about promoting his work. And he was very busy in Utah and really didn't need me, but he mm-hmm. liked me and he liked my ear. So I signed him. Right so you, but you literally found him off of Ink Tip? Yep. Like, mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, I found him off of Ink Tip. Good, good question, and I hope that helps you there. Jason? Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually taught a uh, class over at the American River College for a day, and the guy said to me, uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, there's a writer I want you to meet. His name is Jason Bortz. He's really terrific. He, you know, he had an agent, but whatever. I read Jason, and the script was so rock solid, I actually thought someone was punking me. It was such a great story, and it was so, it was so interesting and well-voiced and well-crafted, formatting perfect. I, maybe one typo, one letter was off. I mean, it was perfect. It was utterly I want to present this to a agent. It was perfect. And I called him up and I said, please let me run this around for you. And finally, after four years of repping this guy, we finally got an option for him. And then there's Craig Sabin. I mean, the guy, talk about chops, HBO, Disney, you name it, he's got it. He, again, doesn't need an agent, but doesn't understand the formality of what we do. And so very shy about promoting his work. So I'll work the phones, I'll do emails, just like a writer should do. They have actually trained all of my clients to do that because I don't operate in a vacuum. I have to have help. You know, I don't have secretaries. I don't have a big staff. I have two interns that I love. They volunteer because they know when the cake and ice cream comes, they're going to be on tap. So uh, so how did you meet Craig? How did you meet Craig Saban? Great story. I signed Richard Broadhurst. He said, I have a friend who you should meet. So Craig, he drove up to Sacramento from L.A., uh, shook my hand and said, um, I really want you to rep me. And I read his script and I said, thanks. I have to. The script is fantastic. It's called Overkill and it's been optioned many times. And right now it's in front of some very big eyes and we're waiting for casting to happen. So those are my top three. And then I have um, Pia. She, I met her through screenplay, uh, uh, through um, uh, uh, Michael Cornetto, who's the producer of my show, Babs Buzz, uh, simply scripts the site. I read her. Uh, vampire movie arterial motives and i loved it it's a it feels like a found footage the chick is so talented i mean i meet so many people through the show that i did you know i i host babs buzz which is trying to pay it forward and be an agent to the world and people Mm -hmm. reach me from around the world and that's how i find folks and that's how i found the rest of my writers robert powers tanya uh, beshman all the people that are that i've signed right now you can see it on imdb pro most of them are there Okay, great. So um, let's talk a little bit. This is another very common question I get, and I'd be real curious to hear what an agent has to say. But what do you think about contest? I mean, the Nicole Fellowship and even the sort of the second tier contest, the Blue Cat and some of these other contests. What do you think about that? And should writers spend their money entering contests? You know, your timing. I always that's what I love about listening to a show. And I hope people who are listening will like you on Facebook and comment because it really does help spread the word. For folks like Ashley and me to pay it forward, you guys and gals who are listening. Uh-huh. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. No, thank you. You are really helping. because. But your question is so timely because this week it was on the tip of my tongue, and I didn't talk about it on Babs Plus, so I'll talk about it now. I have no idea. Contests to me are so peculiar. I have read so many contest winners, and the scripts just don't do it for me. And I hell if I know why. I've read maybe five or six. Seriously, out of the hundreds of scripts I've read, maybe five or six. And one of them happens to be Craig Saban's. It's very good. Called Karma. That really are terrific. Another one. Oh, um, Beckworth. One of the best scripts I've ever read about the the, the guy who was the black Indian uh, hero of of of, of uh, Chucky over there. It's fantastic script written by James Watts. Uh, it's rare that I find a screenplay. And here's what I think it is. I think I figured it out. It is, there's a difference between well-crafted story and market-ready screenplay. Market-ready screenplay literally takes the story and presents something that a director can get their talons into, rather than just reading it for the sake of being entertained. You tracking me? Mm -hmm, Sure. Yeah, and, and the best example I can use would be horror. I'm not a horror fan, but I had to. My writers need a paycheck, so there it is. I don't love it. But I will tell you this. I read Insidious before I saw the feature. And the screenplay was, to me, terrific. The movie was good. Screenplay was so good. 
what I read was a director's inter- what I read was something that a director could go, oh, I could party with this horror scene during daylight hours. Who does that? Nobody. He's brilliant. So same thing with Jason's script, Floored. You know, we, we, I've seen contests come and go, and here's why they're good. They get the writer ready for criticism, and most writers don't like that, but it's a necessary evil. Mm-hmm. You know, because you, listen, you can always erase stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like if some if a writer approaches you, do you feel like it piques your interest a little more if they can say I've won this contest or placed highly in that contest? Is it is it all? It sounds like your experience is not that great with you know, with reading the scripts. I want to turn it around. So, for example, if it comes to me, if that doesn't pique my interest, you're right, it doesn't. But I, but I but I have a, a B game. You have to remember, I'm a salesman, right? I'm no different really than a real estate agent. A hundred calls a hit. A hundred calls a hit. A hundred calls a hit. That's what I do all day long. Hundred emails a hit. That's why I use you. You 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 have spread the word about our agency in such a, a positive way. They actually have you know people looking to me now, going, "Hey man, you know what's this about?" But it's that it might. I have a B game. If I read a script and I love it, I can say to my buyer, "Oh, and by the way, this person is a nickel this or a blue cat that or a spec scout this." You see what I mean? Yeah. So what do you think? You mentioned Ink Tip earlier. What do you think of Ink Tip and the blacklist? Should writers be using those types of services? No question. It's the most inexpensive way to have a publicist. Look, mm-hmm. everybody needs fingers in the pie. The fastest way you do that is not through an agent, but through all the blogs, uh, Jeannie Bowerman's site, your site. The, the fastest, just the shortest distance between two points are, are bodies, right? So the more... The, I love Screenplay uh, University. That new site, SSU, mm-hmm. they are amazing. They are... They are really my kind of site. But Inktip, really, I sold my first feature that got shot on Inktip. I love those folks. I, in fact, I like them so much that when I when I start to push something, you're the only person I have not met face-to-face. Uh, I vet everybody. But mm-hmm. I know of you. I know your reputation. And, and so we've kind of gotten to know each other and bonded that way. But I flew down to L.A. and met with the owner of Screenplay Readers. I met with the owner of Inktip. I met with these owners. I sat down with them and said, look. I'm a tiny shop in Sacramento. That's really all you need to know. But if I fall in love with the script, get out of my way, so I need help. And they showed me their machines, and I use them. So if I use them, the writer should, because they're inexpensive, they're manageable, and frankly, it gives the writer a really great sense of what the business is, but more to mm-hmm. the point, it isn't. So another question that I get, um, you know, if you're going to use something like Inktip, and you even mentioned that um, you sold the script on Inktip, you know, another question I get is writers, especially newer writers, they feel like, hey, why would I give an agent 10% if I'm out there selling my script myself? Um, can you speak to that a little bit? I agree with it. Why would you? But here's the end game. You have to understand the end game. The buyer is going to try and get as much of you out of, they, out of you as they can. So... I will bet you 60% of your audience didn't think about live streaming. I will, be, I will bet you 60% of your audience did not think about prequels and sequels. I will bet 80 to 90% of your audience did not think about quote-unquote franchisable characters, right? They don't mm-hmm. think that way. They think, I got a sale, I got a credit. They're very much in the moment. Good. Stay there. You be the balloon, I'll hold the string. Don't sign anything that you're not sure of because you could ask Pia, She'd be a great interview. People steal stuff all the time. They think just because they're, you know, they have, you have to remember, there's a transfer of copyright that a lot of writers are not aware of. Once a producer buys your work, he owns it. Now, you're getting paid for that. You're getting a credit for that, but they own it. So you have to prove to them that you own it so that you can sell it. Well, what happens if that, that in the short that you've just shot, you don't have the right to a prequel or a sequel, and all of a sudden, we see out of this particular short an Iron Man. The, the original writer is going to end up in, in court. You do not want that. That's why you pay the 10% so that the agent... Now, I should give this caveat because it's huge. So if you're listening, say yes. As it, yep. as it happens, we're not lawyers. But we're very savvy as to the current environment. So now we will put a hold harmless in everything because we won't, don't want to be sued. But we will tell people there's terrific lawyers that you can get for 300 bucks for an hour. Have them take a look at it. It won't kill you. In other words, if you're going to be a business professional, be a business business professional don't don't shirk the agent for the 10 percent because they're literally here's what happened once an offer comes in i do a lot of work there's a lot of back and forth i've got a print i've got a sign i've got a proof i've got a print i've got a sign i've got a proof and it becomes this sort of paper volleyball game okay it 
So the $10 that I earn on the $100 you're going to make for your credit, I bust my ass for that. And that's why I don't like doing these things for free. I want to see a little skin in the game. I don't do it for the $10, obviously. Please give me a break. What I do, what I do it for is my hope is that the producer will knock it out of the park so that I could say that's my client, number one. And number two, my client will come back to me and go, guess what? They got funding for a sequel. They got funding for a prequel. They've got mm-hmm. $6 million on tap and they want to do another feature. They want to take my characters and do it. Now the writer goes, oh, I'm so glad I had an agent for that. So, yeah, so let's let's talk about some of your recent some of the recent scripts that you've sold and maybe even give us a little bit of insight, um, you know, quickly on how you actually got that script sold. OK, I found a script um, through a writer. She was repping. Uh, she worked with Sydney. Her name is Lorene Lacey. She was a uh, partner at uh, Great American Pitch Fest. And I, I liked her very much. And she had a screenplay that I just loved, but it needed some work. Uh, but the concept was there. It was rock solid writing. She just needed, she really needed a spit shine. And uh, we took it upon ourselves to help her with that. And we gave it to her and we said, here it is. Are you okay with this? And she said, absolutely. So we ran with it. Well, sure enough, we got a, a bite on it. Now, I want to digress a minute. So if I get off point, reel me back in, Ashley, okay? Because sure. this is important. Writers have to stop thinking that a screenplay is a lottery ticket. Not every screenplay sells for ginormous amounts of money. Most of them sell for about ten grand. That's a thousand dollars for my company. So let's do the math. A thousand dollars for me. I have to split five hundred with Ed, five hundred for me. All of that, half of that goes to Barack. So I get two hundred fifty dollars. So for me, it's a pair of shoes and a bag. So you better believe I better love that story because I'm pretty much working for nothing. Okay. That said, I get this script sold for her. She likes the number. I like the number. Everyone's happy. She comes back to me the next day. Sellers remorse. She says, "No, the screenplay's worth ten times that." I said, "Listen to me very carefully." Because if you're listening, this is important. A house is only worth what the appraiser says it is. A house is only worth then what someone's willing to buy it for. This producer has this much money to spend on this shoot. Do you want the job or not? Yes or no? Don't sign the paperwork till tomorrow. I ask every writer I deal with to sleep on it. Mm-hmm. Why? Where do you come up with this this ten thousand dollar number? You're basically saying that's like you know on a, on a three hundred thousand dollar movie is like the budget. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, yeah, I'm pulling that number out of the air as a hypothetical. We're doing yeah. working on a, we're working on a fifteen million dollar budget right now. It's WGA. That means it's WGA all across the board, which means we shoot for three and a half to four percent of the final principal photography budget. So if the principal photography budget is ten, we're going to go for three on that. They'll probably counter at two and a half, and we'll settle somewhere in between. Plus, we try to take a little bit on the back end when the funding is that big, and this, this one could be. So that particular script went, sold, was shot, and aired on television. She gets no royalties because she's not a union member. So she wasn't happy about that. But let me tell you what's cool about that. Every Christmas, people see her name every single Christmas because it's aired. And that's exciting because it got her an IMDb credit and it got her attention. Now, fast forward to another feature I just sold in Mexico. This is so cool. I sold this for 25000 bucks. That's what the writers are getting paid. Uh, the, I think the shoot is total 250000 So that's kind of nice. Um, mm-hmm. Writers are happy. This is so neat. This is so different. This producer has allowed us to change the names of the characters, change the title, and change two character arcs, re-copyright it under another name, and resell it in America. That's how decent these people are in Spain and in Mexico when they're buying stuff. They realize that you may be able to flip the same script. It's not really the same, but we get it. Uh, but you have to copyright it, of course, and then you have to put a, a hold harmless in there and they get that done. So we just sold that one. I just sold another one for a thousand bucks. That was just a straight out sale. The producer said, I want it. Give me the money. Where's the money? Just sold another one for twenty five hundred bucks. Give me the money. Write it up. What's important about these tiny little nickel and dimes? Writers get a good credit. They're getting experience. I get wonderful experience. This is extraordinary. Mm-hmm. It's very helpful for me because now I'm kind of becoming the McDonald's of whatever. But I still have these two big figure pictures out there waiting to fund. What does that mean? Well, by the time they fund, it's not going to be a lot of money for everybody, but I'll tell you what it's going to be. It's going to be a big opening weekend. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have a question sort of based on that. Um, I have a, a producer in India who is interested in one of my scripts, and he is willing to just buy the Indian rights and let me resell the script to an American producer. One of the concerns I have, though, and I'd be curious to hear your take on this, I'm I'm concerned with that because I don't think an American producer would want to buy a script where the movie has already been made and distributed, even though it is a market like India, and there might 
might not be that much crossover between America and Europe and, and that kind of thing. But so I've been concerned to get involved with that. Um, what is your take on something like that? Well, I just did it. And I can tell you that we had to have a lawyer look at paperwork. But for the three, four hundred bucks, it was worth it. Because mm-hmm. the writer may get another deal out of almost. It's not the same script. You know how this is. It's really not. I mean, there's, there's a hundred vampire movies. They're all pretty much the same. There's a girl, there's a guy. There's a but when you get right down to it, uh, that's the kind of documentation that what we do is we absolutely run it by a lawyer because we don't want to hear about it later. I don't want yeah. a, a friend of mine just used um, seven minutes, uh, seven seconds of public domain footage that's out there in the world. It's 10 years old. And one guy, his face was seen on film for several seconds of that seven. And my friend was sued and lost. Huh. Uh, so the, the moral of the story is cover your butt. If you're gonna, if you can spend three hundred dollars a month on coffee, then take that money for a month, set it aside, Mr. and Mrs. Ryder, I love you dearly, or Ms. Ryder, uh, set that money aside, please, and put that aside for your retainer for your attorney, because there is attorneys out there in L.A. that are very inexpensive. They'll read a contract real quick, tell you what's missing. The most it'll probably cost you is five hundred bucks, the best money you'll ever spend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. um I, this is kind of a wrapping it up question. As someone who reads a lot of scripts from writers who are trying to break in, um, are there any common mistakes that you see over and over again? Sort of, you know, some parting tips and tricks that you could give to writers who are writing those first couple of scripts. The main thing writers do is they overwrite because they're afraid, simply put, Ashley, that the reader is not going to, quote, get it. The way around that Ms. and Mr. and Mrs. Writer is you read scripts that are very, very well respected by agents who are shopping them. Now, there's an argument that's out there about how much black should be on page, meaning how much ink. I can tell you straight up, for people like me who read all day long every day, we want as much white on the page as possible. We want to see story, crisp, fast, no typos. Don't give me a flowery cover. Give me 12-point courier font. That's tradition. Why? Because that's how we were trained, so it's easy to read. Give me fade in. Give me the characters. Don't put Riley's in the... Riley's... Remember in the old days, Ashley, when the villain it was silent movies and the guy would twirl his mustache and go, yeah, uh-uh? Yeah, yeah. That sort of become known as a Riley. I mean, uh-huh. say Joe, and then under Joe's name, parentheses, giggles, ha-ha, gotcha. Don't put... Because the director may look at that and go, I don't see this at all. I see this as a very dark moment for Joe. <laughs> so don't put Riley's in anything. Don't use ING words. Don't say skiing when you can say skis. Don't say running when you can say run. Why? Faster read, easier on the eyes, passive voice is a drag. Adjectives suck. Get rid of your IL, kill your baby. Get rid of your IL words, get rid of your ING words, make it lean. If I'm you as a writer, I shoot for 90 pages. Why? Because you can always add bad breath and, you know, hair and a mustache and a car later. If an agent needs more information, they'll kick it back to you and go, hey, you know what? You might want to tweak the second act right here. And it actually just happened with a script. It was 88 pages. I said, oh, I'm going to read this. And, I'm gonna, and I read it fast. And I was able to really help the writer quickly cure what ailed it and put it on a tip. Mm-hmm. So it really, for me, the, the fastest, the shortest distance between two points for a writer is right lean. You can always add, but cutting, here's what happens. You become emotionally attached to your own words. And you can't, and when I say you, I mean the general you. You can't do that as a writer. I would hand, as a novelist, I would hand stuff to my mother-in-law, she's a great editor, Margaret, and I would hand stuff to her, and she would hand me boxes of pages that looked like they were hemorrhaging. They had so much red ink on them. And she'd circle one sentence at the bottom and go, you need to do more of this. And I would go, what? The point <laughs> is, right, lean. You know, yeah, right, yeah. Right. So good I'm, advice, yeah. good advice. So um, if people out there are listening, if they would like to submit a script to you, what does your process look like for that? First, go to our website, Silver Patella Agency. That for sure, do that. Okay, we'll, we'll link to that in the show notes so people can get directly there. That'd be lovely. Read Save the Cat. Why? Because it's just easy to understand what directors and producers are looking for when they're out there on the hunt. I know a lot of people are like, Save the Cat, that's horrible. Eh, eh, eh. You know what? My job is to sell out. Period. I want to sell every seat in the house with a script that sells out. I want to sell out. How do I do that? First, I have to sell in. Right? That's where you come in. So mm-hmm. what happens, if you can, when you pitch me, only give me the log line, the genre, the page count, and your resume. That's really all I need. I don't even need a synopsis. If I want more, I'll ask for it. Um, because here's why I want to ask for a resume. If you have chops, I want to treat you with respect. 
if you're a new writer, I'm going to treat you with even more respect. Why? Because you don't know what you're doing. And there's nothing wrong with that. I woke up this morning. Five minutes in, I, I wake up and I do this thing with this email with this writer. And I go, I didn't know that. I learned something within five minutes of my coffee. So if I'm getting bombarded with this stuff and I'm learning, what does that say about you? But don't ask the agent to teach you. You can ask one or two questions and then stop. Use your head. I had to cut this gal off. It was like feeding a cat, right? I put the plate out. She, she drinks. I put the plate out. She drinks. But by the fifth, by the fifth email, I said, honey, here's the website. Go do your work. It's time now for you to sweat it out. And in other words, don't put me in a position where I got to go there. You know what I mean? Then you go, sure. oh, she's mean. And then, you know what? Put your big pants on. We're all in this together. Nobody, if I pass on your script and you write the next ET, I'm going to be the first one in there to buy tickets, put, put my feet up, watch your movie, and clap because you did it. This nothing, No one is promised anything. If you did the work and you get it done, great. I'm glad for you. But don't hold any agent or manager's head against, oh, you passed. Don't do that because you never know when you're going to have mm -hmm. that person. You just don't. So what's the, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? You mentioned your own podcast as Simply Scripts. Maybe you can kind of tell us a little bit about yeah. what you're up to, your Twitter handle, that kind of thing. You bet. Um, my Twitter handle, I forgot. Forgive me, Ashley. You'll probably find it. I'm, I apologize. I'll, I'll link to it in the show notes, too, so, so people can find it. The way to get to me is through forum.writerarena.com. You can um, email me there. You just post a, you know, a request on the site there. And uh, Michael takes care of all that. He's my show producer for Babs Buzz. I urge people to listen to Ashley's show all the time, every week. I love the interview with Gerald that you did, Ashley. It was terrific. I learned so much. And the great thing about it was it was very succinct. Um, thank you. Thank you. You bet. Anytime. Thank you. Keep it up. And then if you guys could like um, uh, Babs Buzz on Facebook, if you happen to like the show, or even if you don't, tell me what I'm doing wrong, and I'll fix it if I can. I'm happy to, to grow and change right along with you. Babs Buzz is a really good show. We've been doing it for three years. We, we, we would, there were times we got eight and 9,000 hits on this show and it kind of surprised me because I, you know, I'm a little guy in the middle of nowhere. Well, now I'm really, really busy. So I kind of have to do the show because I don't have time to read every single piece of mail I get, but I do. And I get mm -hmm. a lot. So yes, absolutely. Go to forum.writerarena.com. You can access me. So now you have an agent kids. So there's no excuse. Okay. I'm here. If I pass, I pass. You go to the next agent on the list, but right now you have access to an agent. So don't sweat it. You can sit back and tell your sister, I have an agent. Yay. Now we have to see the great script. That's what's next. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. So, Bev, you've been very generous with your time. I really appreciate your coming on the show. You're the best, Ashley. You, you helped us so much. I don't even know where to start. I was happy to do this. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to be running another online class called Writing a Great Second Act for Your Screenplay. Many scripts die quickly in the second act, even after a very promising first act. Having a terrific second act is what separates the novice writers from the professionals. So if you're struggling with your second act, hopefully this class can help you. The live class will be Saturday, July 12th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash classes. But if you can't make it to the live class, don't worry. It will be recorded and you can listen to it later on. In fact, all the classes that have been done through SYS Select are recorded and are available to SYS members to watch anytime they'd like. The two most recent classes are How to Make the Opening Pages of Your Screenplay Awesome and How to Write a Killer First Act for Your Screenplay. So this class on the second act is following along in that series. SYS Select members get access to all the old classes as well as the live classes each month. To learn more about SYS Select, just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash classes. I also run a general screenwriting Q&A before each class. So if, you're, if you have any screenwriting related questions, really any questions at all, I'll be available to answer those questions before the class starts. Once again, I want to thank ScreenCraft for sponsoring this episode. They're currently accepting submissions for their comedy screenplay contest. They have a great lineup of judges, some of the best comedy producers in the business. The deadline for entry is August 1st. Check out ScreenCraft.org if you have a comedy screenplay you'd like to enter. So in this week's in this week's writing words section, I want to talk a bit about something that Babs talked about. So many writers I talk with ask me how to get an agent, and I usually feel like if you have to ask the question, it probably means you're not ready for an agent. One of the things that's clear from talking to Babs is that there are agents like her who are always looking for new writers, and they are willing to read material from new writers, but the writing has to stand out. 
there's really never been a time when getting access to the industry has been so easy. Obviously, I have my own email and fax blast service, which I think is great and has worked wonders for me. But I've talked about a lot of the other services on this podcast too, Ink Tip, The Blacklist, and Spec Scout. Getting people to read your material has really never been easier. There's a ton of services out there. But at some point, someone has to read your script and think it's pretty damn good. And the best way that I know of to make that happen is by sitting at your desk day after day and writing a ton of screenplays. It can take years to get to the point where you have a solid, marketable screenplay, and no one is going to pay you to write those first terrible scripts. You've got to push through those on your own. I can't tell you how many times I've looked at scripts from new writers and within a page or two, I can tell the writer simply hasn't put in the time and isn't even close to being a professional. So don't let that be you. Spend some time get mastering the craft. Obviously, I think marketing is important and often overlooked, but don't forget to write a good script too. That's the show. Thanks for listening.